So today, I'll go in depth with fundamental topography principles that I use and you can also use to design sites like my portfolio or other beautiful websites you see on the internet. Honestly, I cannot stress the importance of having good topography on a website. Topography evoke specific emotions and they contribute a lot to the first impressions of a website. So I want to ask you real quick, which one of these topography selections leaves a better impression and fit the project theme? If you chose the left one, you have a pretty good eye for topography and design. But if you chose the right one, don't worry at all, I got you. So let's dive deep into the typography principles and improve our understanding what makes typography good on a website. Before we go deeper into more examples, there are three essential font families you have to know. First off is serif fonts. They are known for their visual features that have feet or tails. Serif fonts are an excellent choice to evoke a sense of sophistication and elegance or something more traditional like you see in newspapers. In common awards websites, they are often used as heading and titles which can make the website look so much more elegant and clean. Here are some of my go-to serif typefaces and some of them are free but some of them are not. On the other spectrum is the sans serif font family. In French, sans serif literally just means without serif, so without, without the tails. Sans serif typefaces are probably the most common font family you would use for any kind of websites if you want your designs to be clean, readable, and minimal. Here are some of my go-to sans serif typefaces. Then you have monospace fonts, in which their letters and characters each occupy the same amount of horizontal space. You can see this being often used in code editors or tech-based websites. And yeah, that's it for the font family basics. Let's learn how to improve your typography. I'll be real with you. Changing the font settings has to be the easiest thing to learn in typography, but makes the biggest difference to making your design look clean and professional. With font settings, here are four basic settings you can start off with to achieve better typography. Font weights are how thick or heavy your font is. They can help a lot with creating visual hierarchy and contrast on the design, in which I'll demonstrate later in an example. Typically, when you choose a font, choose one with a lot of different thickness, so you have more flexibility when you design. Font sizes are basically how big or small your font is. To achieve a clean and consistent design, we use a type scale to reference when designing a website. Having a type scale will save your life when designing sites, and I recommend taking a look at typescale.com to see the different type scales. Leading or line height is the vertical distance between lines of text in a paragraph. For leading, it's important to get it right. For body text, I usually use between 120% to 150% to ensure the best readability. And for headings and titles, I usually use a tighter line height or leading between 85% to 100% so that they don't look too spaced out. Letter spacing or tracking can make a big difference to making your design more polished and readable. For body text, I usually use minus 1% or 0% tracking. And for headings, I use minus 3% or 5%. These numbers really depend on the fonts, so play around with it. Now let's put it all together. Here I have a set of text that could be much improved, especially in terms of visual hierarchy and readability. Let's use the four font settings that we learned just now to improve the set of text. So let's improve the font weight first to create some visual hierarchy. Now let's change the font sizing to improve the visual hierarchy once again. After that, let's tighten the line height of the heading, widen the leading of the description or the body text to improve the readability of the text, and finally, the tracking of the text. After all those simple changes, we now have a set of text that is not only visually aesthetic, but extremely readable. Now the next typography principle is contrast, and there are two types of contrast. First is color contrast, and it is easily one of the most important principles to follow when designing any websites. You need to make sure that your text is readable by either changing the background color or the text color. At the same time, you don't want to hurt your user's eyes, so bump down the lightness of the color. Much better. When working with colors, make sure they pass the contrast test. What I always do is that in Figma, I use the A11Y contrast checker plugin to check the contrast. Or if I'm developing a website with code, I use the dev tools to check the contrast ratio. Now just a quick quiz to practice what you've learned. Which design have a better color contrast? It's this one. Let's try another one. In fact, both are actually good. The next one is form contrast. So it's a size contrast between text. Big headings and titles attract attention well, and the following smaller texts tend to support the big headings and titles. 
In my projects, I choose between three to five font sizes for the whole project, not to make many styles. The steps between font sizes should be big. The difference will help a lot with the contrast and create visual hierarchy so your users know the order to read and understand which information is important. Once again, type skill helps a lot with this. Okay, now, which design has better form contrast? It's this one. Since the size differences between the text is so distinct, better visual hierarchy is created so the users will focus their attention towards the big heading and then the body text. Before we move on to the last principle, I just want to let you know that watching this video alone would make you better at typography immediately. You need deliberate practice by designing, or another method that I like is to look at inspiration. I actually recommend looking at awards for inspiration or even posters on Pinterest. But if you're looking how top industry leaders use typography, this is where Mobin comes in. Which I'm extremely hyped to say that they're today's sponsor. Mobin is a collection of over 300,000 design screens that are used in the real world, so you can take inspiration from the top designers in the industry. If you're looking for designs with typography that are tried and tested and less experimental, Mobin is the perfect place. As a matter of fact, I actually used Mobin as a part of research for this video to find apps and websites with good topography. And of course, Mobin is not only limited to finding good topography. One of the biggest value I find is that you can find all the design flows and screens from top companies. For instance, WISE, they have flows and screens for onboarding, pricing, and you name it. You can also filter by mobile and web apps by categories, screens, marketing pages, UI elements and flows. So it's safe to say that it's quite a heaven for me to find top inspirations and just doing research in general. I personally use Mobbing a lot for my freelance works, so I really recommend checking out Mobbing for free using my link down below in the description. An absolute huge thanks to Mobbing for sponsoring this video. Anyways, back to where we left off. So next one we have is alignment. The alignment of the text really helps manage the user's attention and make sure that the text is readable. We have three types of alignment. First one is left alignment. It's what we usually use 90% of the time since by default it's very easy to read since there are no inconsistencies at the start of each line of text. The second one is center alignment. Center alignment is great to make things look more visually balanced, but a lot of people make a mistake of center aligning huge amount of text, which makes it incredibly unreadable due to the inconsistencies of where each line of text starts. So my rule of thumb whenever using center alignment is that for headings, make sure it's max two to three lines of very few words. And for body text, it's a bit more words, but I still make sure it's max three lines of text to ensure readability. And the third one we have is right alignment. I rarely use right alignment since it can hurt readability for a large amount of text. So in rare cases, right alignment works great for a very short amount of text or big headings. And now, which one has better alignment? It's this one. Now that you've understood the basics of typography, you might be asking, where can I find crispy, clean, and immaculate fonts? Well, I got you. For free fonts, use FontShare, Google Fonts, or Uncut.wtf. If you're looking for premium fonts, I love taking a look at Thai foundries such as Pangum Pangum Foundry or Swiss typefaces. Another fantastic resource to find new fonts is from Calypso Instagram, and I found a lot of hidden gems there in terms of font faces and just design resources in general. Well, hopefully you found something valuable out of this video. Other than that, make sure to like and subscribe, or check out these other videos where I go over more design principles in web design, or this video where I go over design resources that you can use for your next project. Other than that, thanks for sticking around. See ya.